Yeah, yeah. it's just something like I looked at my life and I looked at my wife like I did something right. <laughs> Look, I'm not switching my price. Baby, I know what I'm worth. I be like, they got it Monday. I get to get back to work. Hey, shine like. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's come to my attention that um, some people don't really know how an egg tumbler works. So the type of fish that I breed are African cichlids and they are part of the mouth boarding uh, species. You have your egg layers, your live bearers, and then the type of fish that I have are mouth boarders. Female right here. She has the eggs in her mouth. So what happens is the male, the female drops the egg, the male comes around and fertilizes it, and they continually do a circle pattern on a flat surface, or I've even seen them um, spawning in the sand. So she'll pick up the eggs, and she'll pick up the sperm, and she's fertilizing the eggs and keeping them rotating. That's what you see her doing right now. She's rotating the eggs in her mouth. All right, so now let's go look at an egg tumbler. All right, so here we have an egg tumbler. There's a couple working parts to it. Very simple, simple engineering on it. So it's basic, it's replicating exactly what she is doing. So what happens is after you put the eggs in, an airline is put through the top. So when the air is being forced in and coming back out, it forces water through the tube up and out. So what that causes is a tumbling motion or rotating of the eggs to keep them moving, cling to each other. Basically the same thing what she's doing in her mouth. So it's a really, really basic. There's only like eight working parts to an egg tumbler very easy to use um, I have another video called uh, eBay egg tumbler and I go through that video I'll leave a link in the description or try to put it into the video that way you can check that video out and see how easily they're set up and um, you can go from there so right now I'm just doing some water changes, cleaning off the bottom of the tanks, um, and doing like a, uh, a vacuum on the tanks, getting a lot of the stuff off the bottoms. I'm taking a lot of the substrate out, as I really don't see a, a purpose for it in the, the grow out tanks. Right here we have the OB Red Empress group. This netting I got um, from work, you can you can buy it, but from what I've seen is it's pretty pricey. You have to buy a whole lot of it. So basically it's just providing a little habitat in there for the smaller fish to, to hide from the, the more aggressive ones. Well, there's a little bit going on in the fish room this morning. Hope you guys are having a great day. I just fed these guys some more shrimp. There's that one hanging out back there with some shrimp. You know. Seen a lot of activity uh, ever since I started using the shrimp. That was a great tip. 
so I've been debating. I have these, and these are homemade sponge filters. And I will go through another video and show you how to make these. These are like all said and done, you can probably get 30 sponge filters. Let me just show you real quick. So I'm not kidding you. When I got these two tanks from one of my breeders in Rockford, he was uh, going out of business. I don't even know if I can untie this. But uh, not, not going out of business, but he was just no longer gonna be in the hobby. So he asked if I had any use for sponges I'm like well yeah so literally these are already pre-cut ready to go all they need is the hole drilled in them and I think he even sent me with the template that he uses yeah well, check this out this is pretty cool so he told me take this template set it on the top Get your uh, your hole saw, but from what I've seen, I've seen people taking a piece of PVC and just rubbing it. I mean, obviously, you you take this, press it down, and then you drill right through. And then what you end up with, nice clean hole straight through. Now that to me is impressive. That a biological, this is what you see in like huge breeding vats, like um, uh, Imperial Tropicals. If you watch any of his, the vats that he has, he has big blocks of this. And I, I believe it's just a big block like this and a piece of PVC laid through like this and then a, a riser tube up on the end like this. That's what that is. This stuff you get from your, your fabric store, your sewing stores. This is like, um, uh, like a seat cushion. Make sure you, you know, make sure you always read on the package that it doesn't have any, uh, mold inhibitors, um, anything that, that, you know, would be really bad for your fish. Make sure there's no harmful chemicals in there, no mold inhibitors, no um, anything along those lines that are a synthetic, you know, uh, product that's going to really harm your fish. And I've, de uh, I've been debating whether or not I want to turn this into a, uh, a grow out tank, which would mean that I would have to place, uh, I've, I've kept all these little sponges for the bottom of the tank, or for the bottom of the egg tumblers. These are just things to keep the water clean going through. And it also will stop the, other fish from trying to come up here and uh, get the eggs from the bottom. I mean, they're really, really tiny holes, but I've seen that before. So you just place all these back into the bottom, and since I already have a setup for air valves, that it would just be pretty simple, and this could be another grow out tank. I don't think necessarily a, a, a breeder tank, just because I'm in and out of here so much that it would um, be real disruptive. So I highly recommend you um, going to look into something like that if the, the box filters aren't in your budget or you know, uh, these sponge filters aren't in your budget because these are like nine and ten dollars. And you know, those are the cheaper ones, but the hydro 
sponge filters. These were the first ones I bought just because new into the to the sponge filters, I just thought, you know, just buy premium, which is not always what you need. So these are the hydro sponge filters and these are the, the higher end sponge filters, if you will. And they are um, about $10 a piece, I believe. But you go to the lower end sponge filters, what I have in all of these, and you can usually get like a four pack for $15, $20, something like that. But they're, they're a coarser filter, whereas these big um, seat cushion filters, the pores are a lot smaller, if you will, in them, so they will trap a lot more and filter your water really, really good. And that'll be an up and coming video on how to make these. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and uh, get this tank cleaned up a little bit. Also, if you guys are liking these uh, vlog type videos, make sure to uh, let me know. So I just take these out and throw these right in the sink. And the way I have this drain set up on this, uh, this sink, it goes out to my sump. And then hanging on the sump, I have a micro filter to catch everything that I dump out. So it just catches everything. I mean, even the sand doesn't let anything into my uh, sump for the house. So that's how I can get away with just sucking up all the sand and everything if, if I don't want it anymore in the tank and it's uh, growing a lot of algae on it or whatever have you I could just pull it right out and dump it right out all right so this is the dirty way style we, a lot of us do this so it's just creating the siphon and pulling everything out I recommend buying a clear hose that way you can see when the water is coming So this is the OB Red Empress Group, the Albino OB Red Empress Group. There are no albinos in this one though. It'll be rare, but hopefully that time will come soon where the offspring will be some albinos. So that'll be awesome. I haven't seen too many OB Albino Red Empress, so let me know if you guys have seen them and what you think of them. be a little sideways but this is I gotta get all the way to the back on this tank simpler I was going to install I was going to install a uh, I was going to install a uh, three inch PVC something along this lines you know it doesn't even have to be three inch all the way it can just have the taper on the top and install it right here well actually it had to be here that way when I'm doing gravel backs I can just pull and put into here and then tap into that line for the sump straight out, you know, straight back and out and over. 
that'll be uh, a summer project. So I think that one will be a uh, much needed project. You know, I could even go as far as running it all the way around the room to the bottom of all of these. And that way I can just do the water changes right there. I really like that idea. Let me know what you guys think about that idea. I think that's pretty cool. As long as I can get it to all go that way. Just really like to sh share my fish with you guys and what I'm doing in the fish room. Here is a all male group. This is a hybrid male. And that is bear and an OB female's offspring. Not too bad looking dragon blood right there. Just didn't have the color qualifications for me. There's a, a platinum OB Red Empress I'll be working with shortly as soon as I get these males sold. typically don't use these very often I'm running out of space so I need to use them this is the uh, platinum dragon blood group I'll show you guys how to make this stuff this is my chlorine remover and I'm fresh out